beautiful. One man's trash is another man's treasure. There we go, boom. This money's spent only once, I've said it before, mm -hmm. but you know, be smart with your cash, you know. Buy, buy once and buy well. Buy once, buy well. That's it, I need to write all these down still, they keep going up <laughs> Welcome everyone to another instalment of Eleanor's Don't Say the Word podcast. I am today joined by Michael Sears, who is Managing Director at Sealy's Walker Jarvis. That's got it. it right. yeah. There we go. Got it right. Um, and the lovely Stella Laygrove. That's it. I pronounced it. See, I'm getting good at this. Um, who is the Area Manager responsible for overseeing Eleanor's charity shops in the South East. Welcome to you both. Thank you. And what we're going to talk about today, or the aim of really this, this podcast is to explore the evolving landscape of high street shopping, um, the perception and the values associated with charity shops, which will be interesting. I want to hear what you think about charity shops. Um, and we really just want to shed a bit of light on how the shops, charity shops contribute to the vitality of high streets, um, their impact on the community, well-being, and also their role in sustainable and ethical consumerism. That's a mouthful, but we got there in the end. Um so, yeah, so really, you know, let's look at the charity shops. Let's look at what their role plays in the landscape of the high street. Um, and this is podcast two of our mini series. So welcome both again. Thank you for taking the time out to come and have a little chat to us today. Um, Michael, do you want yeah. to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do? Yeah, I certainly will. So I'm uh, Michael Sears. I'm managing director of Sealy's uh, Walker Jarvis uh, or Sealy's Estate Agents as we're also known mm -hmm. as in Gravesend. We, we deal with, uh, the relevancy of this is that we deal with commercial agency. So okay. we deal with letting commercial property from industrial warehouses through to offices and more importantly, retail. Uh, yeah. So the, the high street and the change of the high street, we see it firsthand w what's happening out there. So w one interesting thing is that uh, I think when Brexit happened, and it's nothing to do with COVID, when Brexit happened, mm. um, we had a number of brands looking to come into the town, mm -hmm. um, but we were talking to and all of a sudden that fell off the shelf overnight. Did it? Whereas interesting. more recently, the brands have started to have conversations with us we've introduced starbucks into the town which is a high-end brand so that's, that's good for gray's end starbucks yeah but, but it's a high-end brand coming to gray's end what yeah. does that say about the town ah. but off the back of that everyone else gets mm -hmm. a benefit whether it's mm -hmm. the local trades people whether it's eleanor's or whoever mm -hmm. interesting so i mean Bre how long ago was brexit that was like long time ago yeah. i'm thinking I, I like i'm thinking covid is ages ago <laughs> let alone brexit but yeah so there's like literally from then it's you notice oh wow yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. So in terms of your role, Michael, around, because like you said, you're trying to bring, I suppose, more high end. Is it just Grove's End? You, you... No, no. So okay. on, on the commercial side, we deal with, we go as far as uh, London Borough, Bexley, Dartford, Gravesham and Medway. Yeah. Okay, so certainly with the where Eleanor covers in terms of our clinical services, there's quite an overlap. We're sort of predominantly Dartford, Gravesend, Swanley, Bexley, but Stella, we got shops everywhere, haven't we? I know Liam went. We've got Blackfin, about, Welling. That's it. We've we've like branched out. We've got, and we're going to get more. Yeah. As well. So okay. Good to see. Yeah. No, is it good to see? I mean, absolutely. What, yeah. what is your, What are your thoughts? Is it good to see charity shops on the high street? Because let's be honest, right? It's a bit of a stigma attached to charity shops everyone's got their own perception of it for me it's almost like your damp you know smell of damp moth bitten type you know everyone's chucks all the stuff that they don't want and that's not the case at all but if no. I you know if you asked me this you know maybe two or three years ago that's my perception of charity shops I don't really want to go in there but they're completely different now I mean still we've got quite a lot of shops they're all well kept they're all looking good am I right yeah I think I think charity retail have upped their game in the past 10 years really trying to make it look more boutique more attractive more inviting nice. so it's good to see okay good to see. so we're following the trend good and not just you think charity shops in general yeah okay and that's interesting and I mean what do you think around charity shops? having this stigma you know let's let's be but, honest Michael right you're trying yeah. to create this town and this you know maybe upmarket type feel to the town and we've got charity shops scattered everywhere what's your thoughts about and, that? and there's a negative response to it all to say oh, you know charity shops and coffee shops and nail bars and, <laughs> yeah. and, and there's this negative uh, impression but you know Eleanor and, and the likes of Eleanor uh, are important to the retail landscape purely because number one it gives people a choice perhaps they're on a budget that's true 
Mm -hmm. um, very much. Or if people are very sensible about their money and they realise it's only spent once and mm -hmm. they get a bargain in a charity shop that, that will be commensurately less than, than buying something new, but it's still new to them, then mm -hmm. absolutely that's a positive. So do you think like Gravesend as a demographic, is there a type of shopper that shops in Gravesend and is there a different type of shopper that shops in Dartford? Like, Tell me about the demographic. Does it change or I, is it quite... From my experience, I've seen the same people in, say, Wedding, Blackfen, Bexley, shop in Dartford, Gravesend. So they move around. So they are thrifting. They ah, are moving around and they okay. are looking at what they can get, where they can get it. So it's... Interesting. So you almost need like a bit of intel on the, right, I've got a charity shop here and I can go there. And yeah. I mean, it's good for us. For oh, absolutely. Hospice. Absolutely. It's, it's not a bad thing. And is that something we'd, I suppose, encourage charity shops to shop around and go wherever they felt comfortable going? I think we've got, <coughs> we've now got a market of people that have become really, really savvy when they're shopping. So okay. we've got some shops that do furniture. So mm -hmm. they'll, they'll check out all three of our furniture shops, see what they can buy might buy something else while they're in there. We've got people um, buy to letters mm. and furnishing flats to rent, et cetera, et cetera. I see. So they are, they are branching out and looking around. Yeah, so my perception is we're a bit of a sort of throwaway society. It's like you use something once and you chuck it and it's, you know, everything is like, I need it now. And, it, you know, I can go on Amazon right now and I can order something and get it. And maybe that's changing a little bit. Maybe with like eco-friendly sustainability, reusing, you know, giving your items away to charity shops. Is that something you're noticing on the high street, Michael, around that maybe change of mindset with that? I, I certainly do sense a change in that in terms of particularly amongst the younger generation are moving a bit away from brand buying and stuff like that. I'm realizing that the money is spent only once, That's you know, true. which is which yeah. is a, a good thing to see. Mm -hmm. The other thing as well is that, you know, you've had the the onset of online retail, um, which has taken up all the warehouse space everywhere. Uh, so we noticed the fact that warehouses have all gone um, mm. and because of the demand has been huge and rents on warehouses have gone up. But I sense now that there's a change full circle from people being disappointed with what they got through the post on online retail, really wanting to come back to retail in the town. Wow. So there is there is a definite shift towards that. The appetite from local businesses is huge. Mm. Um, Gravesend's doing very well. We've got very few vacancies. And, and people talk to me about all oh, vacancies here, vacancies that I can generally give them the background of why something's vacant and why it hasn't been taken up already. And normally it's a change of planning, change of use, or something that's yeah. just stopping it getting going do you know what i mean so i'm grows in born and bred don't I live yep. in essex now but like that's so refreshing to hear because yep. it it, bre it breaks my heart sometimes and not so much recently i think you're right like there's a, definitely a shift but the yep. times i've walked through town over the last you know four five six years and it, there's places that are just empty and i think like oh i used to walk up here holding my nan's hand and we'd go to the butchers and we'd do this and we'd go to this shop and it wasn't like a one-stop shop where you go and i miss that vibrancy in the high street so the fact that you feel that that's coming back and people are i don't want to say lazy because I'm, I'm probably the laziest one like i said i'll go on amazon and i'll get something tomorrow and it'll be great but there is an appetite you're right to, to want to go out and look and explore and yep. find out a bit you know your local community and you know what your town has to offer i mean it, i mean that's going to help us obviously in Absolutely. our shops isn't it? Absolutely. And it hopefully we can keep that trend. I suppose I worry a little bit that it's there, but is it coming back enough to warrant, you know, maybe propping it up? I think importantly, there's a bit of a mix in that as well, where previously leisure had a very much out of town feel and any leisure bits and pieces, whereas now leisure uses are coming into town as well. So that mix mm. of retail being alongside leisure uses means that the footfall increases and that helps everyone as well. So do you think, you know, less cost of living, you know, everything that's going on at the moment, you know, people are penny pinching, I certainly am penny pinching, you have to. Um, you would, I suppose I would only come into town for shops I could afford. If it was full of shops that I couldn't afford, I wouldn't bother coming to town. Do you think maybe that plays some mindset in, in people's mindset, i.e. come into, I can come and I can spend my money comfortably and get what I need, not, you know, let's face it, some designer shops and things. You can't always... Well, I'm, I'm a bit of a stickler, right? If there's a T-shirt, it's a T-shirt. Whether it's 50p or £50, it's a T-shirt. That's me. I'm not Branding means absolutely nothing to me. Names mean nothing. But to the younger generation, it often meant something. So it's really interesting to hear that that's changing. That may be changing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, wow. And, and retail is constantly changing all the time. Mm. Um, 
but there's there's lots of uh, developments that are happening um, in, in and around Gray's End. So housing developments? Housing developments, obviously, in the town okay. centre. The market's obviously just been taken over by new operators, which is a good positive thing. It's about regeneration mm. as well. So quite often, you know, the brands okay. that people love, like Marks and Spencers, you know, suddenly they come out of a town and it's it's a downer. Mm. But new brands take their place, like Things like the B and M's, mm. like the local. I, I would love to see every high street, Dartford, Grays and Bexley, whatever it might be, have individual shops where you can't get anything anywhere else but that shop but that in that shop, town, I see. and that brings people in. So yeah, I love that. So Eleanor's, what we got? One shop in Gravesend, one Gravesend, one Gravesend. Um, what's the? Is that a busy shop for us? It's getting busier. Okay. It is picking up. Good. And it's uh, it's certainly well known. Yeah, everyone knows. Everyone. Well, everyone knows Eleanor. Shop. Yeah, <laughs> everyone knows Eleanor anyway. But, and is there a particular um, demographic that tend to shop more in, in, in Gravesend than other areas? No, I mean, like I said, I've seen the same customer shop from one of our shops in another area. Um, so it's the Eleanor they follow, not necessarily the location? I think some of them Eleanor, some of them are just really thrifty. We've got a lot of customers. I love that. I a love lot a of bit customers of that come from West London. <laughs> oh, really? A lot of customers coming in from West London. Okay. Um, getting their designer brands at a cheaper cost. Oh. Um, but there is a massive shift right now with younger people, not just buying clothing, but furniture as well for upcycling. Wow. Um, clothing, we have a lot of art students coming in so they can assemble the clothing and, and make another garment out of three or four pieces for an art ah, project. So, so there's creativity behind yeah, it. Absolutely. Oh wow. So there is a okay. massive, massive shift with younger people shopping now in our shops. And I suppose I mean I'm not on TikTok, but all like the social media stuff and I know like my niece like she absolutely loves it and she'll be like flicking through certain things and you're right, there's like this creative angle, isn't there, around well, you know what, I'll make my own clothes. I don't need to go and spend a load of money. I'll actually get that, that and that and I'll create my own. So we're almost enticing people in and helping them to utilise the creativity at a reasonable cost. I mean, that's exciting stuff. Charity shops Absolutely. are really playing a part, aren't they? Yeah, they, they have their place and, and it's a valuable place as well, for sure. Good. And okay. sustainability and recycling and all of that side of things. And quite often, though, you go into an Eleanor and you pick something up that's been worn perhaps once, if at all. Yeah. And there's those bargains there as well, which you think, that's great. you know. And you're putting back into the local community, back into a charity. Yep. So I suppose you feel better buying, knowing that you're doing that. Then, you know, let's just say, I'm not that it's bad to buy from, you know, any other shop, but I'd certainly feel better if I was putting money back into a local charity. 100%. And we all know where that money goes as well and what it That's does true. with Eleanor. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. I love this. It's a completely different spin. I didn't even like envisage this conversation heading this way, but really, really interesting. Michael, tell me what makes Gravesend different. You know, how are we different as a town? As, as a town, I mean, it's got so much history here. And, and, and mm -hmm. I think there's going to, you know, much more can be made of that. But you, you can't forget the fact that our northern border is the River Thames. And back in the day, we were the Heathrow Airport of our time, i.e., the boats that used to come we in were. to yes. the UK stopped yes. first in Gravesend before they went up to London. So, you know, there's that history there. But it's got character as well. I mean, um, the Heritage Quarter where the high street is. That the council have, have deliberately designed that so that all new shop fronts going in or whatever have got to be in character with the, the, the history of the place. So, oh, wow. and not every town's got that. Not every mm. town's got a River Thames. Not mm. every town's got a Pocahontas history or, or whatever True. it might be. So, there's lots of positives about Grey's End. And is that something that, like you say, the council almost like um, is endorsing the word or almost like pushing you to keep that character? 100%. Okay. 100% there's that. And also, uh, I remember when we uh, converted our shop uh, that we, we've got in Parrick Street um, mm. from a two-storey building to a three-storey building in a conservation area. So that wasn't easy. But yeah. we put it back to the G Georgian facade that it would have originally been. Um, and that bit of generation in that street, suddenly four or five other shops in the street change their shop fronts as well so okay. regeneration leads to regeneration so lots going on in the town with with reef the developers immigration borough council yeah. seeing that through that there's lots to happen so our gravesend shop that's been there a fair few years over 15 i believe over 15 so there's been multiple generations I suppose, yeah. visiting that shop and potentially generations that have, you know, had family members, you know, um, 
die, that are bereaved, that have come in for a bit of support in the community, maybe volunteering because they've... We've that, that goes to all of our shops as well. Yeah, it does. Um, but we've seen generations grow up. Are they all... Is that our oldest... Is that the one we've had for the longest term? No, years? the oldest one is Dartford High Street was our first shop. Really? And I think that's over 25 years. Oh, my goodness. Fantastic. Isn't it? Yeah. That is like the so quaint, touching, The quaint isn't little it? shop. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't remember. I don't think I've ever been to the Dartford one, but that's so lovely that there's there's generations of people potentially that have got a connection to that shop. I know some of the shops, they've seen people go from being a child yeah. to doing their work experience. Um, purely because they've known to Eleanor, they've used their services or know family members that have been cared for by Eleanor. That's so so they'll give back their time. Um, in our shops and you watch their families grow up in front of you um, next thing you know they're getting married wow. so it's just that whole generational thing and that, like I said it's that whole community hub as well around our shops it's just amazing and it's a great uh, yeah. feeling and it's it's fantastic to see and what an achievement to be able to stay there that long you know because if a business isn't making money let's face it you're not you're not going to stay so that's also a big achievement isn't it to uh, have I that love, longevity i love that multi generational yeah. thing that, that mm. eleanor offers as well mm. absolutely yeah that's yeah well, well done well done that's a good well that's done, eleanor. Clap. Well done <laughs> eleanor that's amazing um, so looking at we talked a bit about the evolving landscape and so it's really refreshing certainly for me to hear the high street is not dead in the water. Like it, it's coming back. It's and that's really, really good. How do you think? Um, I suppose Stella first. How can the high street and you know like agencies um, like Sealy's work? Uh, sorry, Sealy. Sealy's. Sealy's Walker Jarvis. There we go. Yep. Sealy's Walker Jarvis got there. Um, how can we um, work collaboratively so charity shops work a bit, you know, better with more, you know, commercial teams? We were actually just talking before we came in about you know if there's vacant properties. We could actually save those the empty premises oh, and the okay. furnitures and the, the white goods in there from going to landfill and actually oh. utilising those and selling them through our shops. I love that. And also with clothing, if people who often we've had um, estate agents, somebody's vacate the premise, can we bring everything here? Fantastic, because that's also saving that stuff from going to landfill. Yes. So the more we can be more sustainable and save that mm. from going to landfill. Not only that, is people are budgeting for their pockets. Mm -hmm. Do they just want a project to upcycle something? Mm. Like I said, art students. So there's always partnerships there. It's almost like, it, like you say, a real partnership. You give us the heads up and vice versa and we help each other. Then, and it we? could be a volume of, of bits and pieces because absolutely you, you get people um, that, you know, for whatever reason, they're moving around the country, perhaps with work or whatever, mm. and, and they don't always need to take every bit of furniture or whatever it might be with them every time. Mm -hmm. So there are those opportunities around. Certainly agents, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's a great way of getting a volume of, of um, articles or whatever into someone like an Eleanor. So, and also good. recycling, not wasting yeah, it. That's know. very true. Sure. So what you're telling us is you're going to have Stella on speed dial. I am. And as soon <laughs> yeah. as anything comes up, you think, oh, no. And you're going to print. And We're switching numbers phone. after this. <laughs> see? It's locked in. That's it. Relationships. No, that's really, it's really, really true, isn't it? And I, I don't, obviously, like you say, when premises are vacated, it, particularly if people are getting out in a rush, there might be things left behind. What can we do with that? We don't just want to chuck it. We want to actually put it back into the system, if you like, and... You know, that's what's the what's that um that phrase? Someone's someone's rubbish is someone. man's trash is another man's treasure. There we go, boom, exactly that. And I suppose that's you know a lot of that is the ethos of charity shops, isn't it? And there are memories and everything behind everything that Eleanor sells. And yeah, it would be good to see these things not go to waste. Is there a risk? Here's a question: that we get too many charity shops and it goes too much one way. <laughs> I, I think I think going back we were at that point but I think there's a lot of charities now that have realised that actually they can earn more money by having less properties in certain areas mm -hmm. certainly for anybody that's got charity shops in London itself right okay um, one charity I know of have shut half of their shops and just concentrating on what they have left that's a that's a big step isn't it shutting half of them brave brave wow. step but it's worked is it? But in other areas where there's a broader spectrum of customers, more people looking for more choice, cost of living, etc., mm. that there, there is a need for that. Um, other people just want to bargain, mm -hmm. want to get high-end brands for less cost. So I think not overkill it, 
in the high street with charity shops. But I think there's a, a nice little line okay. where you can all sort of get on together with high street, yeah. mainstream trading and, and charity shops. And I suppose that's a responsibility, you know, for, you know, obviously your, your company as well. Do you want to flood the market with too many of one thing because you then could tip it over the edge and go the other way? I mean, how do you find that balance? In I, I, I can't centers? see I can't see that happening because I think that there's a place for everything and the market decides its own level mm -hmm. in many ways. And the important thing is to have shops filled mm -hmm. um, and, and good businesses trading out of them. One of those is, is charity shops and it has its place for sure. Um, plus... Eleanor, you know, right away across northwest Kent, it's got this presence. We all know what it does mm -hmm. and we all know where every penny of money spent in that shop goes. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's something that's a little bit unique. It's local uh, and it's good to see that we know all of those things, you know, where the money goes and um, yeah, definitely. what difference it's making. And I suppose like charities that have got shops, we, we have to put our business hat on, don't we, and sort of say... Sometimes less is more. Like you say, it's not just about we're, we're another shop, another shop, another shop, because if those shops might not be performing as well, um, whoever it was that you said, you know, strip back to maybe half, but actually that's that's been the best thing for them and potentially either kept their income or generated more. We've got to be maybe a bit smart, haven't we, as, as an organisation and not maybe go into pockets where it, it's probably not going to be too viable. Taking your steer on where would be a, a good location for a shop, that sort of thing. It's, again, it's partnership working, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's lots that agents can do to represent uh, someone like an Eleanor. Oh, really? In sourcing, in okay. negotiating a good deal for a lease as well. Right. But, good. you know, getting shops filled and, and getting that presence in all towns. So, yeah, absolutely. There's lots to be done. I love that. And is there, um, obviously, there's loads of different charities, um, loads of different charity shops and stuff. Is that quite a big portfolio for, for your organisation now, charity shops? It's part of the mix, but mm. but it is a mix. Uh, and as I said before, you know, towns have got leisure uses mm -hmm. that, that have been growing. And I think alongside that, certainly the, the established charity shops such as, as Eleanor, they will survive and they will do well. Uh, and I think it's about getting that footfall back into town centres and making town centres somewhere as a go-to destination again. Yeah. And I suppose there's part of it, it's great encouraging people back in, but you've got to maintain that, haven't you? And you've got to offer something that's quality. And and with what Ellen has done, you know, I've noticed charity shops aren't the charity shops of 10 years ago. Mm. Um, Which is a, they a good have thing. transformed. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, but, but, it, but it's a, a real good retail experience as well. And I know that we've put um, quite a bit of effort into our shops, in their appearance. Um, and yeah, our, our director of operations, Liam Stone, he was on our most recent podcast, uh, really happy with, yeah, that almost that investment and that, you know, looking at the shops and making them a bit more welcoming. Because it does make a difference. You know, if, you, if you're walking down the high street, you want to be enticed into those shops, don't you? Which is like you said about the appearance of the front and... It's about the, the the quality of the experience as, a, as opposed it. to the quantity of what's whatever's in each shop. Yeah, that's a bit a bit of that. Yeah, and it, you mentioned leisure as well, so that yeah. plays quite an important part. Because do you think that's people would? I love a coffee, right? That's my thing. So I go out, and if I am going shopping, always got to have a coffee. It's my thing. So I will always go to a whatever a Costa Starbucks, whatever it is in the local town. And that's what I enjoy about coming into the town. So if you didn't have that, if you didn't have the leisure elements or, the, you know, the restaurants or do you think you get as many people? Absolutely not. And the panic rooms of this world that are in, the you know, panic escape rooms, yes. rooms, you can't, you know, they were top <laughs> tourist attraction in Kent. Yeah. Uh, possibly still are, I'm not sure, but that's a big positive. Brings people Very into true. town, everyone who's, who's retailing benefits. I love that. So leisure is not just coffee, it's panic rooms. Absolutely. I love <laughs> <laughs> panic rooms with coffee. Panic rooms. <laughs> yeah. That's my sort of panic room. I'd love it. Yeah. No, it's, you know, it's really, really interesting. I mean, Stella, from your point of view, is there anything that maybe we can be doing? What's your ambition? Tell me your ambition for like the Eleanor charity shops and, you know, partnership moving forward. I want um, everyone to know Eleanor. Really? Everyone going to walk into a lovely, bright, contemporary, airy, welcoming nice. shop. Lovely staff and everyone knowing everything we're doing, yeah. where that money's going to. And yeah. because Eleanor is the local hospice, everybody knows us. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to support us and partnerships, I think, are always there to be made. Yeah, I love that. Well, from your point of view, is there anything that you think we can be doing more of or ambitions for the future? I think we all love Eleanor. We all know what Eleanor, Eleanor does, but absolutely being smart about what we do. So... Mm -hmm 
partnerships between people yeah. like us as agents and, and yeah. Eleanor. Absolutely, that's the way forward. And there, there's lots of things, as we said before, it could be a, a volume of bits and pieces that, that supply chain uh, to the shops mm -hmm. uh, and it makes life easier as well if you've got that regular supply as opposed to thinking, you know, where's... Where's the stock where's coming items, from? Where's the yeah. stock going to come from? You know, it makes Get life that. easier for staff and everything yeah. else if it's a regular thing. So there's lots that agents can be doing, yeah. Great. So we are getting new shops, got new shops. We are getting ready to open our next one, which is Rochester, which has been Ooh. in collaboration with Sealy's. Oh, thank you very so much. So it's an exciting exciting moment for us have we been to Russia before no okay so this is no, no it's the first why, time why not great location and the great Marriott so, is, so have you yeah. almost is this advised that we go into Rochester no 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 uh, Liam uh, mentioned earlier Liam's <laughs> been sourcing and, and, and he's on it he's, right. That's right. he's on it he's on okay. it and yeah, we uh, had a mad idea <laughs> certainly that was one of your, your key locations but no absolutely what a great Marriott for Eleanor and uh, Rochester High Street because it's such okay. a plethora of stuff uh, down the high street and, and so many different bits some pieces then very few brands apart from the odd coffee shop maybe or whatever but mm -hmm. no it's it's a good different nice. experience at Rochester High Street good place for you to okay. be so we're going to stamp our authority in Rochester High Street absolutely yeah. uh, when's that when's the shop roughly I think we're around about a month a month to six weeks from opening oh wow so so how so this is just for my sanity how would you stock a new shop would you take stock from other shops I'm ready Okay. So we, need to know. we don't even need to know the how. I'm right? ready. Just, just Stella's happens. there. She's got the suitcases full of stock. She's I, was, I was quite fortunate. I've still got a lot of friends from where I worked in other charities in West London. Okay. I've managed to acquire hangers free, high in stock. It's typical free. charity, but yeah, we'll, yeah, so, yeah, I love it. So, okay. And so again, more, more, recycling. more recycling. More recycling. Absolutely. So and if, I would always say, though, every week's trade that we do is saving a ton of waste going into landfill. Mm -hmm. So I always look at it like that. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, exciting. And any other new ones? Or is that Swanley. It? Swanley as well. It's in the pipeline. Oh, so hang on, is there a risk that we might get too big? No, never. Never? <laughs> no, I forget it all. I'm managing it all. It's fine. Bring it, bring it on. <laughs> I, okay, that's good. Okay. Well, that, I mean, it's good for us. It's not just obviously from an income generation perspective. Some of our other podcast sessions touched a bit on the stories and the community feel and you know th there's a story behind every item that someone donates and it, I mean it for me it, it is lovely that you have this community feel around the charity shops yeah. and it is people that you know I, I suppose want to give something back that that maybe well, of course they want what they want but they, they're giving something back and I I'm going to sit and say comfortably that that's in the back of their mind thinking I'm giving back to a charity or a hospice and it just matters a bit more I suppose for me absolutely um, yeah. and that's your USP isn't it that's a USP yes exactly yeah. see I'm not like I haven't got this business mindset or anything so <laughs> I could learn a lot but it's a USP isn't it yeah what, what's that for our listeners apologies for using jargon US, <laughs> USP is unique selling point okay of which we will have many yeah at Eleanor we are very unique we are very unique. absolutely that's very true okay um, I was going to ask one more question um, around, I suppose, for each of you to answer. How can Eleanor's charity shops um, help our communities? So let's so for example, for me, is it just a shop or is there more to it? Can it's we do more with it? It's a community hub. Each shop is a community hub. Mm -hmm. We have people that may not see anybody all day, mm -hmm. but they'll come in, they'll chat, they'll know everybody that's in there, whether it's um, staff or volunteers. And it, it builds communities mm. and they all talk about Eleanor, the support they've received in the past or are receiving. Um, definitely a p first point of call for anybody that relates to Eleanor. The shop is the first point of call that yeah. they're introduced to Eleanor in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, some of our customers have been there for shopping there for 15, 20 years. Some of our volunteers are even longer. Mm. So it's a real commitment and a real community around that. And so, that's it's quite unique, I suppose. If you're thinking, obviously, you're you're letting you know certain places and certain buildings in town, for to have that community feel. So it's not just retail, is absolutely. It? And to add into the community, you know, that volunteer side of things, but also, it, you know, from a business point of view, there's many opportunities out there. So it can be a hub for many 
different aspects of what you do in, in each store. Yeah. Uh, so there's lots, I'm sure, to be done on that score as well that, mm. that income generates that puts the money back to where we need it, which is the hospice. I love that. Do you know what? That's a, quite a nice note to finish on. I was going to say, anything that you, else you want to, I suppose, share with our listeners? Um, any top tips about, you know, charity shops and any anything really? Final, final words on the podcast? I would say our charity shops, there's something different every day. Mm-hmm. And no two days are the same. And I think for myself and the whole team in retail, we do what we do because we know how all our hard work is helping other people. Yeah. So if you can put a smile on somebody's face once a day, you've had a really good day. Yeah. And that's that for me makes it worthwhile. I love that. It must be quite rewarding for you as well to know that, you know, you've got a hand in almost allocating and supporting charity shops around Absolutely. town centres. I'm not going to say more than Mary. You don't want the whole town swamped with mm. lots of different charity shops. Of course not. Mm. But they ha- they certainly have their place in the retail landscape. Um, and, and it's just that option that it gives you. And mm. aside from anything else, money spent only once. I've said it before. Mm-hmm. But, you know, be smart with your cash, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's what long you, what may you, continue. We, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. I love that. What a fantastic note I, to end I on. once and buy well. Buy once, buy well. That's it. I need to write all these down, <laughs> Stella. Keep going. Up on <laughs> so on behalf of Eleanor, I just wanted to say a little thank you to everyone that supports us in, in our retail endeavours. Any messages for our listeners, Stella, for those that support retail? Keep shopping. Keep shopping. <laughs> keep shopping. We Come must. back. Yeah, keep coming back for more. Michael, any, finish, any last words for our, for our if listeners? If you've never been into an Eleanor before please go in and see what it's all about. Love it. There we go. And that was our podcast. Thank you for listening and I will see you on the next one.